Okay, in this video I want to go over how someone would go about getting their own domain name. And I think that everybody should have their own domain name. And not even if you, you know, not just for web pages. You may never want to have your own website. But you at something.com is a great email address. So if you have your own domain name, you can make unlimited email addresses. And it's, it just sounds more professional and it doesn't require a big investment. Now, normally, for I've got a number of domain names, and I've used a service, uh, directnick.com, which is simply one of the many dozens of domain registrars out there where you can buy a domain. They charge about 15 bucks a year. Other places charge about 10 bucks a year. Some places charge a little bit more. But they have a, over at Directnick, they have a nice interface for managing domains. And you can certainly do a search. So you could do a search for, uh, I'll do a search for RR Phillips. And of course, I see the .com is taken, but the .net is available, and so forth. So instead of using DirectNick, which is perfectly fine, I'm going to use Google's domain service, which, if you haven't tried it out yet, is also it's pretty straightforward. And people kind of like Google's reputation. So instead of using DirectNick service, I'm going to use uh, Google's service for registering domain names. So I'm over here at the Google Apps page, Google.com/a. And instead, of course, using the existing domain name, I'm going to buy a new domain name. And I can search for different things. I'm going to go ahead and do a search for hikinginbend.com. I live in Bend, Oregon, so I'll do hiking in Bend. And let me go ahead and do a check availability. And sure enough, it is available. I just checked a second ago. All right, so I see the one year domain name registration is $10, and that includes everything I need. So I'm going to go ahead and do continue to registration and fill out some basic information here. And they're just asking for name and email address it looks like. And I'm not sure if they need all this detail on here, but I'll go ahead and type it out. So address information and stuff like that. And after I get that filled out, I'll just go through and read these service agreements and then choose I accept and proceed to Google Checkout. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in some credit card information, billing information, and then I will, of course, agree and continue. Okay, one year registration for hikinginbend.com, powered by GoDaddy.com. So, of course, we've heard of GoDaddy 2 as being a very popular domain registration source, and it looks like they, uh, Google is using GoDaddy. All right, so now that that's been taken care of, Sign in to complete this purchase with your Google account. So I can go ahead and log in. Send me Google checkout. No, keep my email address confidential. Sure. I want to receive promotional email from Google Apps. No. Place your order now. Okay, I'm done. So I have uh, made my purchase. I can now access my Google Apps domain. Click here to retrieve your purchase. Now, first step, it's taking me to create my first administrator account. So well, I'll say first step, step three or three. So I'm finishing the order process. So I need to create an account so it'll be the primary account for hikinginbin.com. So I'll create a username and a password and then I'll uh, click on continue with setup. Okay, I've gone into there and now I'm at my dashboard and the dashboard is a popular term used for different services where you can manage the various aspects of the account. So I've got my hikinginbin.com domain and let's look at some of the things that we can do. So I've got a basic edition here and here are my service settings. Now one of the th great things about having your own domain name is having email access to it. So they're letting me know that I can go to mail.hikingandbin.com and I can access uh, a custom kind of email account just for this domain. And I've got a calendar fort set up, uh, Google Talk, Docs, and uh, the Google, Google Site Service, which you don't have to use this. I'm going to just check out their email system for a moment. Okay, so it's when it talks about your users can access email. Basically, you can create multiple user accounts. So I could have, you know, John at hikingandbend.com and Sarah at hikingbend.com. 
all of them could have their own unique email address and email account with this. Name formats and so forth. And this is a cool feature here. This is the catch-all address. What you can do is you can choose the second option here, forward the email to something at hikingbend.com. So this could be, you know, catch-all at hikingandbend.com. So then anybody who types in something at hikingandbend.com, if it's not a specific email address you've already created, then you can have it forward over to this one address. So basically it's a simple way to kind of create a, a unique email address for every purpose that might come along. I'll go ahead and leave it though as the discard the email. So if they're not going to use an official email address that I've provided, then I'll have it discard that message. Okay, so let me just look over. These are the general email settings. Everything seems okay. I'm just really leaving all the default options. And I see there's also some email addresses. Let me click over that. Oh, hold on. Let me cancel. And let me hit Save Changes. And now I'm going to go to the email addresses area. And this is where I can start to make up email addresses. I already created one email address, Ralph Phillips at hikingandbend.com, and I can of course create others. And the best way to go about that would be to jump over to users and create new users. So I'm going to click on users and groups, and I'm going to create a new user, and let's see what we get here. For first name, I'll put my name in again. And for this username, I'll go ahead and put in uh, RR Phillips, create new user. There we go, so the new username has been created. Your username is RR Phillips, and it's given me a temporary password, and the email address is RR Phillips at hikingandbend.com. So now I've got two different email addresses, RR Phillips and Ralph Phillips at hikingandbend.com. And next thing I'll do, I'm going to go and edit settings for Ralph, which is the user I just created. And there's an option down here for me to change the password. Make that password change. Allow Ralph to administer hikingbin.com. Sure, why not? Give them privileges. Email quota, I've got seven gigabytes there. And I'll click Save Changes. There we go, so now I have a new user. And just so we can see what I have here, I'm going to go back to my user list. And now I can see that I've got two users. Both of us have administrator status. and I can go to the email addresses area and now that you can see I have two different email addresses both of them of course can be are accessible with usernames and passwords so now that you've got your domain at the very least you've got various email addresses and you can give out these email addresses which will certainly last longer than your internet service providers email address or your school email account or whatnot as those addresses changes change you don't have to tell anybody about the new one